with NASCOM Insights. I am Vandana Babu. In the previous part, we discussed about some of the trends which define ER&D industry and insights on some of the sectors. I'd like to now take this discussion forward on other aspects as well. In this report, we have also spoken about sourcing industry and about India's advantage as a destination for ER&D sourcing. Uh, we also showcase some of the best practices as well as future imperatives for growth. And uh, to discuss that in detail, we have Amit Kumar, Managing Director and Partner at BCG India. Amit focuses on TMT, particularly the domain of engineering and R&D. Welcome, Amit. Thank you so much, Vandana. Thank you. So uh, we briefly spoke about, you know, the increasing intensity of certain sectors and also, you know, uh, we briefly touched about the sourcing opportunities as well. So I want to delve a little deeper here. Uh, so we know that the overall intensity uh, across the sectors is increasing. So we see a sustained increase in the spending also in the industry till 2030. Uh, so by 2030, what, what do you think are some of the sectors which are expected to lead the growth, so to say, for the ER&D industry as such? And if you can also share some particular examples uh, of these, uh, you know, certain specific leading, ex you know, sectors and they, you can share the reasons for the growth as well. So, yeah. So absolutely. And I think so, um, it's in the, if you look back like four to five decades, this is the first time mm -hmm. we are seeing a broad based increase in the, what we call as NASCOM and BCG ER and D intensity, which is the dollar amount as a percentage of company's revenue that is spending on ER and D. And what we are seeing is two things. A, it is increasing across a wide range of uh, sectors. Second is this intensity is increased post pandemic and we expect it to further increase 2026, 27 onwards as well. Um, if I talk about uh, uh, immediate future, we uh, discussed with quite a bit of um, the industry CXOs. Uh, 2024 looks like a difficult year. But 70% uh, of CXO said that yes, they want to actually maintain or increase their ER&D intensity. Of course, it goes on increasing as we go into the future. If I talk about the specific sector, software has been the largest one globally, uh, leading the ER&D investment in product development, platform development. It is going to accelerate. One of the reasons is the widespread usage of AI, not just Gen AI, but now AI at scale is something which is being used across the different industry verticals. Uh, we also see telecommunication, uh, 5G is live across most of the major markets. We expect to see a uh, widespread usage of applications of 5G and the development of 6G which should start in a couple of years. Uh, going further, there are two sectors I want to call out. One is the industrial, which typically had spent money on R&D on the traditional trades like uh, mechanical, civil, structural engineering. Uh, a huge wave of automation robotics is actually coming through across the industrial sectors. And lastly, automotive is something that we're all aware of, the entire advent of the EV, ADAS, as well as the in-car entertainment. Absolutely. So uh, thank you, I mean, you know, for specifically also sharing what are the key uh, points which are actually driving that growth within the sectors. So also, you know, of course, you've talked about various sectors, but we have particularly seen that post-pandemic, uh, you know, what has been the role of digital engineering? So we have seen the growth, but what exactly has been that particular role? And how actually it has helped in the growth of all these sectors uh, that you've mentioned? In fact, very, very pertinent as we think about the future uh, for er and and for India's role in that is uh, digital engineering. Uh, today is roughly around 45% uh, of total spend. We expect it to reach staggering 65% in just next two to three years. So that's the kind of uh, increase we're looking at. Uh, this means there has to be a concerted effort uh, looking at what kind of skill sets are required, which are tied to the industry domain. Uh, specifically, if I call out uh, three segments, right? One is the healthcare and medical devices. We are seeing a lot of uh, uh, focus on digital uh, applications coming to that. It might be end use uh, med tech devices, which are now connected to the cloud. Uh, it could be robotic surgery. It could be AI in uh, imaging that is happening. Uh, similarly, the energy utilities, oil and gas. Uh, we spoke about digital mining, but at the same time, also talking about the remote management of the distribution of electricity, how can that be done? And uh, lastly, in terms of the industrial, uh, we want to see a lot of digital engineering coming through with the industry 4.0, both at the plant level as well as the maintenance level. 
great. Wow. Thank you. Thanks so much uh, for that insight. So, uh, you know, in the previous segment, we had briefly touched upon uh, the sourcing opportunity. Now, uh, which sectors do you think, you know, especially for India, which sectors are expected to contribute for to India's, so, you know, sourcing share by 2030? And what could be the reasons also for that growth? And if you could also, again, share some specific examples like you have been sharing. No, no, absolutely. I think so. This is, this is a decade for India to actually further accelerate our contribution to ERD. Uh, not very well known, but uh, India today has about $45 billion of ERD exports. That's, that's staggering uh, across tech services industry as well as our global engineering captives that exist in India. Uh, what we expect is that this 45 will increase to near about 130, 170 billion uh, in the next seven years. So that's a massive increase we're expecting. What will lead to that? Um, I mean, useless to say that it will be broad based, but specifically three segments will drive this growth. Number one is the entire focus on the software, which has been a strength of India. If you look at it, uh, every big software and technology provider has a uh, presence in India. We expect that to accelerate. The second thing that is going to happen is the advent of the automotive. We are seeing automotive specific ERD starting to happen in India. Uh, one of the reasons for that is automotive today needs digital on which India has a head start. Uh, last and I will say my favorite is the semiconductor. Uh, this is where the entire focus of the government on the development of the design and manufacturing ecosystem is going to play out. Uh, we have now PLI schemes which actually specifically uh, incentivize companies to do engineering, design in India and manufacturing in India. And that is the way to go for India. Thanks. Uh, so, you know, of course, we've spoken about India and while India does have an inherent advantage uh, when it comes to, you know, talent at scale and that availability as well. But also you have been sharing that, you know, industry is going to grow at a double digit growth. So what are the skills that we can, you know, expect to be in demand in the future, which can be focused on? Yeah, sure. I think this is a very important aspect that you touched upon. Uh, while if we look at the demand is there, uh, the world expects India to deliver, uh, but it will not be a straight line path. Uh, there are two aspects which are very key. One is the kind of skill sets we need and at the scale at which we need. Uh, today, let's focus on the kind of skill set we need. Uh, we typically have segregated our talent into uh, mechanical, electrical, right, and the software talent. Today, what is emerging is what we call as uh, an integrated engineer. Um, think of it as a very parallel to the full stack developer that our software companies think of. What that means is while I might, if I'm an integrated engineer, my strength will lie in electronics design, but I am able to think about what will be the electronics interaction with the mechanical system. How will actually it impact the, uh, the cloud system? That is the kind of talent we need. Uh, mm -hmm. Specifically, if I call out three or four uh, micro skills, the knowledge of uh, AI ML is very important for all the engineers that we bring in. The second is ability to work in a, uh, a cloud-based environment where DevOps is the central part of product development is very important. And lastly, very important is the IoT-based systems, which we expect that the amount of data, the velocity of data is huge, the comfort with that. Uh, a specific call out is the cybersecurity which is something where we believe as an industry uh, we have a gap. And if, we, if, if India can actually cover that, that will be one of the key growth vectors for that. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for those very detailed insights as well as very, very pertinent specific examples that you've shared. So thank you so much, Amit, for those uh, insightful answers. And viewers, the report is free for download and the download links are in the description below. So please do share your comments on this video as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so Thank much. You.